Hey everybody, Danny on here. Thanks for joining us. I've literally just come off the lesson T and I just have to share this. So David comes to see me and he's been trying to add more distance to his irons and his driver, but every single time he did, all that would happen was he'd increase the bend on his slice, his slice would get worse, and his ball striking with his irons would be just, just get worse. It would really compromise it. Now, he wasn't, he'd fallen into a trap of not doing two things, two things that all top players do, specifically in their downswing. Now, I gave him a drill to help him feel what these two things were, and he absolutely loved it. So much so that by the end of the session, he realized I could actually take this straight to the golf course. Now, I'm gonna share with you what these two things are because they are, I would say, probably one of the number one faults I see with amateur golfers. If you're looking at generating more power and more accuracy, you've got to put these in. So before I get into the golf lesson, if you're new to the channel, this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, if you do enjoy the golf lesson, there's a free practice plan, a free guide in the description box below. Just download it, take it to the driving range, or even just take it to the golf course so you don't have to remember a thing. So. What do great players do that I saw Dave not doing, I see so many amateurs do? So we want to generate accuracy, yes? So let's talk about accuracy first and then we'll talk about speed. So accuracy is very simple. If I put my hand out here, okay, we play a, a, this sport side on. If I put my hand out here and I simply go back and through on an arc, it's very easy to keep my hand in that position here. The other thing about this is if I put my hand out here and I simply rotate back and through on an arc, it's also quite consistent, isn't it? It's repeatable. I also, because there's, because there's a rotational aspect, we can generate some speed from there as well. But watch this. If my arm is here now in a vertical position, this is like throwing a ball underarm. This is not as powerful, is it? Yeah. Now what I see with a lot of golfers is this. When they come down, they don't have the club. We want to keep this club at an arc like this. We want to keep it on an arc. But what I see with a lot of amateurs, when they start their downswing, they don't keep this club at this angle. They pitch it up here. Now what happens is what, keeping it at this angle helps us to work on an arc, consistency, and maintain club face naturally. And because we're on an arc, coming from, when the club's coming from behind, we get a slinging action or a catapulting action. That catapulting action will completely disappear if your club on the downswing starts to get here. And it does follow 80% of golfers I see. They get to the top, their right shoulder, or trail shoulder comes out, it pitches the shaft up here, they get steep. Now what do you do from here? Well, you're gonna to have to make compensations and those compensations can vary from golfer to golfer. But the compensations are gonna lose you power and you're gonna get flicky strikes. Look at this here. I see this a lot, people push it up here. They get into this position, they get flicky. This was happening to David. He was massively inconsistent. He wasn't rotating and we were getting ball flights all over the place, particularly when he tried to hit it harder. So we needed to help David keep this angle. He's great angle on the way back, but he needed to maintain it on the way through whilst maintaining or getting some speed. So this is a drill I gave him to help him feel what it is. We got the club and, and we got into a split hand exercise, okay, where you put your top hand on the club like this, you put a hand underneath, just like it would be on a golf, uh, on a golf club anyway, but split them hands maybe four or five inches apart. Now to help him feel, keeping this trail shoulder back here, because he was always moving forward, I said, make a swing. And what I want you to do is this, and you've got to do this firm and quick. I want you to literally throw or straighten your trail arm here whilst keeping this back. So we're not doing this, we're gonna throw it this way, there. And we're gonna throw it so the head feels like it's going this way whilst you're maintaining this trail shoulder back. That motion there. This was a very different feeling because what he would do all the time would simply rotate towards the target. But that's common sense, isn't it? Of course you want to rotate towards the target. The target's there. Why would you go this way when the target's over here? Well, if I said to you, you do two things here, and this is the speed generator. We're keeping the accuracy here by keeping this shoulder back. But what you're doing simultaneously here is this. As you fire down and you throw this down here, what you're doing is you're rotating 
this left side of the body here, my lead side, is rotating towards the target, whilst this bit is staying back here. And you need to feel this. It's like a little stretch. Some people have called it an X-factor stretch, all kinds of stuff. But this stretch here creates the speed, it creates the power. So what you're doing, look at this. We're swinging it back, and I'm throwing this over here, throwing it behind me whilst rotating here. Now, this is in, look at this position. From the here, I'm simply now in a wonderful place, look, to drive through and hit this ball straight. Now, you can't do this slowly. This is, this, we want to be, you want to be able to experience the centrifugal force, the natural motion of the body when you do this. So watch this, as I'm throwing this this way, literally this right arm here, my trail arm is getting straighter. It is not casting, this would be casting by the way. Look at this, it's not casting. That's still solid, I'm throwing this right arm away. It's still, still got its lovely angle, but I'm throwing this here. Now from here, I'm gonna literally throw and I'm rotating here as this is going there. So they work in opposite directions. Learn to feel that stretch here. One, down, up, down, and around, and then through, yeah? So we're going up, down, it's going down here, throwing it this way, and around. And the round bit here comes in. Let's have a look at this in action. So immediately go straight into the shot. I'm gonna imagine now throwing the club towards you, this way, keeping this back, whilst rotating this section towards the target. This is what creates this natural slingshot. Let's have a look at this in action here. I felt pretty good. How close can we get to that hole? Not bad, not bad, not bad for a start. Okay, so this is one of those exercises that you need to do quickly because this is not what you wanna do. You need to experience the centrifugal force that is happening. This is the only way you can, it's just, it's just so natural. When you if, uh, take all the sports like a discus, you know, you've got part of your body going, the lead part going this way, while this part is going that way. It's going out that way initially, isn't it, yeah? Your, the forces are working against each other. It's what creates a slingshot. When you do this, when you throw out that way and that stays behind, we create this slingshot going through. What we don't want to do, look, is do this. Now, just one thing to watch out for. One of my personal faults, and it tends to be a good place for people that hook the golf ball. Watch this. It's not this. Don't throw it and slide. This, if you throw it this way and get into a tilt position, you get stuck underneath, you're gonna hook it. So notice what I'm doing. I am throwing this back, keeping this back whilst rotating towards my target. Throw it back, rotate towards. I get that sensation and then away I go. That then, look, creates the slingshot that's required to play this shot. Be patient with it. Once you get the feel, it's just absolutely lovely. So here, look, I'm throwing it towards you, maintaining this shoulder back there and then around so it goes up, down, and around, okay? A little bit right, it's gonna come back a little bit, a little draw. A little bit right on that one. Okay, so, the two things that all top players do is this trail shoulder is always hanging back. It does not go forward. It doesn't pitch. The, the sh this, this shaft here is always attacking on this angle to create an arc through the shot. How do the guys do it? Very simply, they keep the right shoulder back. That helps this motion. With that shoulder back, they then generate speed. How does it generate speed? They don't pull down here with the handle. They extend, this arm gets extended. They throw the club this way out towards you while simultaneously turning the lead side towards their target. As they're doing this, it's just a natural slinging motion that you would do if you're throwing a ball. Too many golfers are eager to get at the golf ball. We need to create these pressure, the centrifugal force. Throw it out here, not throw it this way, throw it out, get that sensation so it becomes an up, 
throw almost this way and then around you go. And that is as simple as that. Now, what I love about this is, is it, when you do it, it might sound some, sometimes a little bit complicated, but it's actually, once you get the feel of this, it's so, so natural. You'll relate it to throwing, but, but whilst at the same time, being able to kind of feel where that shoulder is, looking after it, and rotate my lead shoulder this way, throwing that that way, and then away we go. A little bit right, but I'm happy with that. Nice bit of speed. Okay, so I really, really hope you enjoyed this exercise. It's an absolute beauty. If you struggle to feel it with an iron, not a problem. Grab a driver, do the same thing here. Feel it there, look, throwing that head down into that position, and then around you go. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with some of your friends that you think could benefit from this training. Of course, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first videos of mine, come and join the community by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. And remember, there's a free practice plan, a free guide in the description box below. Go and pick it up. Until next week, have a great golfing week.